modes of discovery, particularly Rule 23, and we are going to talk about the deposition officer. Again, our mnemonic for our modes of discovery is PDEA, and we are done with letter P, that is your Rule 27 as well as Rule 28. We are also finished with letter I, that is your Rule 25. So in this video, what we are going to discuss is, of course, your letter D, the famous deposition. But mahaba ang deposition. In fact, there are two rules, that is your Rule 23, which has 29 sections, and then you have Rule 25. So, we will divide this into several parts para mas lalong maintindihan kasi most likely kung ikaw si bar examiner, dito ka kukuha ng question. And we start our discussion with the deposition officer. But preliminaries muna tayo. What are the two modes of taking deposition? We already took this up. Answer is First is deposition on oral examination and the other one is deposition upon written interrogatories. What is our basis that is very clear according to your section 1 of rule 23. You can likewise classify deposition into two and that is depositions de beni esse and depositions perpetuam rei memoriam. Ano ba itong deposition de Benny Essie, this is your Rule 23. Ano ang title dyan sa Rule 23? Deposition Pending Action. Meaning to say, there is a case now filed in court. Therefore, your deposition, the Benny Essie, is taken for the purpose of a pending action. How about your depositions perpetuum rei memoriam? What is this? This is your Rule 24. Again, ano ang title dyan sa Rule 24? That is a deposition before action. Meaning to say, wala pang case na naifafile si sa court. Or it is a deposition pending appeal. So your deposition perpetuum rei memoriam is taken for the purpose of unanticipated action or further proceedings in a case on appeal. So, mahirap itong i-recall, ano, kasi this is a Latin term. Kaya, if you can memorize, please do so, kasi this is a possible bar question. Pwede kayong tanungin dito. So, we will now go to our topic, and our topic for this video is all about the, it's all about your deposition officer. Wag niyong mamaliitin si deposition officer ha, kasi if you have read that case of Dulay versus Dulay, ang Dulay versus Dulay is dinidiscussed hindi lamang sa school but even in your reviews. That is a famous case. Ang naging issue dyan is all about the deposition officer. Biro mo umakyat pa sa Supreme Court dahil lang sa tanong about sa deposition officer. But before I go, or before we start rather, let me just call your attention that if we talk about deposition, marami ang mga personalities involved dyan. Sino-sino ba ang mga tao sa deposition? You have the court where the case is pending. And then you have the parties. And then you have the lawyers of the parties. And then you also have your witness or someone who is called the deponent. And take note that that deponent may either be a party to a case or a stranger to a case. And then you have the deposition officer. So your deposition officer is the officer before whom the deposition is to be taken. At pag tinanong ka, sino ba ang deposition officer, then you have to make a qualification. Bakit? Take note that your deposition can be taken either in the Philippines or within the Philippines or it could be taken outside of the Philippines, meaning in a foreign country or in a foreign state. So, if the deposition is to be conducted within the Philippines, sino ang pwedeng maging deposition officer? Answer is, he could be a judge. Question, is he the judge of the court where the case is pending? Answer is no, because yung judge dito is could be any judge. 
let's say, for example, you have a case filed in Quezon City and you have a witness who is living in Cebu City and you want to depose that witness. Therefore, you can, you can ask any judge in Cebu to act as the deposition officer. Who else? You have the notary public. Question, legal ethics. Are all lawyers notary public? Answer is definitely no. Kasi para ka maging notary public, there is a procedure. You have to apply for it. Me, I am a lawyer but I am not a notary public. For personal reasons, hindi ako nag-apply for a commission. Bakit? Kasi pag ikaw ay naging notaryo publiko, marami ka nang magiging kamag-anak. Kaya huwag na lang. So, what is our basis? You read section 10 of your rule 23. Persons before whom depositions may be taken within the Philippines? Answer is judge and notary public. So, sila lang ba ang pwedeng maging deposition officer? Answer is no because there it could be also any person or he could be also any person as long as he is authorized to administer oaths and also there is a stipulation in writing by the parties. So, sino-sino itong authorized to administer oaths. Example, your prosecutor, your fiscal, they are authorized to administer oaths. Therefore, they could be a deposition officer. Who else? The clerk of courts or the labor, labor arbiters, they are also authorized to administer oaths. Therefore, they could also be a deposition officer. Basta ang requirement according to section 14 is the parties stipulated and that stipulation must be in writing. <clears throat> so who else could be the deposition officer? If the deposition is taken in a foreign country, then the deposition officer might be the consul, vice consul, consul general, consular agent of the Republic of the Philippines, or the secretary of embassy or legation. So sino-sino ba ang mga ito? Recall your international law. According to Justice Natura, your Consul General is one who heads several consular districts. Or if merong large consular district, then he is the head. While your Consul is one who is in charge of a small district or town or port. Your Vice Consul is the one who assists the Consul and the Consular Agent is the one entrusted with the performance of certain functions by the Consul. So what is their functions? Their functions generally pertain to commerce and navigation, the issuance of visa and others designed to protect nationals of the appointing state. So, Ito ang pwedeng magiging deposition officers. And what is the requirement of the rules on notice? You have to notify them. Who else? You have persons or officers as long as that person or officer is appointed in a commission or a letter rogatory. We will discuss that later. And last is any person as long as that person is authorized to administer oaths and there is a stipulation in writing by the parties. What is our basis? This is very clear according to your section 11 of rule 23, persons before whom depositions may be taken in foreign countries. Question, what if the deposition is to be taken in a foreign country, like for example, in Afghanistan or in Middle East, somewhere in Middle East, at walang embassy doon ang Republic of the Philippines, then who could be your deposition officer? According to the Supreme Court, if the deposition is to be taken in a foreign country where the Philippines has no secretary or embassy, then it could be taken only before number two, the persons or, or uh, officer as long as they are appointed by commission or letters rogatory. So, pag tinawag ka sa recitation at tinanong ka ng professor mo if who are the deposition officers, balikan mo yung professor. Tanungin mo, sir, saan ba gaganapin ang deposition officer? Because if it is in the Philippines or if it is outside of the Philippines, then your deposition officers are different.
So, punta na tayo sa Section 12 of your Rule 23 that is the Commission or Letters Rogatory. So, tandaan that ang Letters Rogatory or ang Commission ay hindi basta-basta ang nilalabas ng court. Para yan mailabas, ano ang requirement under Section 12, dapat it is necessary and conv or convenient and there must be an application or notice. Kaya kung ikaw yung lawyer, ikaw yung gustong magpadepose ng isang witness who is living abroad, then you have to file a petition for the issuance of letters rogatory or a petition for the issuance of commission like this. This is an example. I got this in the internet. A petition for the issuance of letters rogatory. Ano pa ang requirement? It must be on such terms as may be just and appropriate. So if you recall that case of Dulay versus Dulay, what happened there? Si Mr. Rodrigo Dulay, who is the complainant in the case, he filed a petition for the issuance of letters rogatory. And what was his reason? His reason was because Several of his witnesses were residing abroad. In fact, si Mr. Dulay himself, the complainant, is a resident of Massachusetts, USA. And then yung another witness niya, who is the manager of the Bank of Boston, is also living abroad. And because of that reason, then the court issued now a letters rogatory. So again, recall a commission or letters rogatory hindi basta-bastang nilalabas ng court dapat maipakita mo that it is necessary or convenient and there must be an application there must be an application or notice and it will be on such terms as may be just and appropriate so we keep on talking about commission and letters rogatory ano nga ba ang mga ito is there a difference between a commission and letters rogatory Ito ha, para mas madaling ma-recall kasi ang dami nang aaralin, ang, ang daming dapat i-tandaan. So, when you talk about letters rogatory, take note of letter R. Because that letter R is also connected with another letter R and that is your request. R, R. Bakit request? Bakit mayroong request dyan? Di ba ang sabi natin, your letters rogatory is issued by the court. It is issued by the court where the case is pending. E kung issue yan ng court, bakit magre-request? E di ba lahat naman ng issuance ng mga court is nakakatakot? Kasi pag hindi ka nag-comply, maaring pwede kang makulong, ma-default, ma-contempt. But why here? is the court requesting. So, common sense. Ipasok agad ang common sense para mas madaling ma-recall. Because the court is requesting because the letters rogatory is addressed to a foreign tribunal. It is addressed to a foreign court. And since it is addressed to a foreign court, therefore, outside yan sa ating jurisdiction. Hindi ka pwedeng mag-impose dyan kasi wala naman tayong jurisdiction. Biro mo, you are a third world country or a Philippines and then you would be imposing to a first world country like for example, a USA or Canada nakakahiya. Kaya that is a request. And since it is only a request, then the method that will be uh, followed or the procedure that will be followed is that the um, method or procedure of that foreign tribunal or foreign court. So what is again your letters rogatory? That is a request to a foreign court to give its aid back by its power to secure a decide information. So that is your letters rogatory. So here is a sample of letters rogatory. Nakita ko to sa internet. Again, what is your letters rogatory? That is a request addressed to a foreign court and for that foreign court to give its aid to secure the desired information. So in our example, this is issued by the Municipal Trial Court of Baguio City and addressed to a judge or a tribunal of Canada. 
So again, your letters rogatory is a request and that is a request addressed to a foreign court or foreign tribunal. How about your commission? Is that also a request? Answer is no, because your commission is a directive, directive addressed to an officer of the issuing jurisdiction. So if your commission is issued by the Philippines, therefore it is a directive addressed to an officer of the Republic of the Philippines. For example, sa Taiwan, wala tayong embassy because of the One China policy. But we have an office there because we have a trade relations with Taiwan. Ang tawag yata natin sa office is MECO, the uh, Economic and Cultural Office or something. And then, the court now can issue a commission and that commission is addressed to an officer of that office in Taiwan. So, that is an example of your commission. And since it is addressed to an officer of the Republic of the Philippines, therefore, common sense, what is the rule that will govern the rules laid down by the court issuing the commission? So, if you're going to talk about a commission that is an instrument issued by a court of justice directed to a magistrate by his official designation or to an individual by name authorizing him to take the deposition of the witnesses named therein. So let's go to section 13, disqualification by interest. Just take note that if the deposition officer is related to the party, to any party or related to the counsel, then he is disqualified. Diba? This is more or less similar to your Rule 137, the disqualification of judges. But in your legal ethics, the term used is inhibition. So if the judge is uh, related to the party within the sixth degree, and this is also similar to the deposition officer, if he is related within the si sixth degree or he is related to the counsel, or if he has financial interest, then they are disqualified. So, basahin nyo lang itong section 13 ng Rule 23 and then relate, to the, relate it to Rule 137 para mas madaling maintindihan. So, if the deposition officer is related to any party or related to the council or he is financially interested in the action, then what are you going to do? You need to file your objection. Bakit? Because if you fail to file your objection, what will happen? You read Section 29 of Rule 23. If you fail to file your objection as to the disqualification of the deposition officer, then that is considered waived. That is considered waived. Take note, ha? Unless, unless, take note, you made your objection before the deposition begins or you made your uh, objection as soon as the disqualification becomes known or discovered. We go now to the duties of the deposition officers. What are his duties? First is, he should put the witness or the deponent on oath or under oath. What else? He should record the testimony of the deponent or the witness personally. The requirement of the law is personal or by someone, magdala siya ng kanyang stenographer, but that stenographer must be one acting under his or her direction and in his or her presence. So what is our basis? This is very clear according to your Section 17, Rule 23. And of course, take note ha, ang testimony of the deponent shall be taken stenographically unless the parties agree otherwise. So aside from these two, what else are the duties? We go now to objections. Ano ba itong objections? Recall that in your deposition on oral examination, it is conducted similar to that examination of a witness in a trial. You are allowed to conduct your direct examination, cross-exam, redirect, and then your uh, recross-examination. And in that uh, examination, 
pwede kang mag-object. Your counsel can object as to the evidence presented or as to the questions asked. This is also similar when you conduct your deposition. Pwede mag-object ang abogado. So, your objections is take note, not limited only to the qualifications of the officer taking the deposition. You can also object to the manner of taking the deposition or object to the evidence presented or object to the conduct of any party or object to e or you can raise any other objections to the proceedings and ano ang gagawin ngayon ni deposition officer if there are objections the def the deposition officer will only take note of that objection take note ha take note si deposition officer will not rule on the objections. Iti take note niya lang yon. Kaya kung ikaw witness, tinanong ka, biglang yung abogado is nag-object. What will happen next? The witness will still answer, but the deposition officer will take note of that objection. What is our basis in saying this? This is very clear according to your section 17 of rule 23. So, ang trabaho ni deposition officer is to take note of all objections made. May magtatanong sa inyo, So, attorney, what will happen to those objections made? E, iti take note lang pala ni deposition officer. So, what will happen is, if the deposition now of the witness, or let's us say, let us just say that the deponent or the witness is uh, Lenny Robredo. So, if the deposition of Lenny Robredo is now uh, offered in the court, then the judge now will make a ruling on those objections. The judge or the court will now rule on the objection and if the objection is overruled, what will happen to the answer? The answer to the question will remain. The answer as recorded will remain and if the objection is sustained, then the answer as recorded is erased as if it was never answered. So these three duties that we already discussed can be found in your section 17. And if you read carefully section 17, ano ang nakasulat dyan? The word used is shall. The deposition officer shall put the witness on oath. The deposition officer shall record the testimony of the witness stenographically. And the deposition officer shall note all objections made. The word used is shall. And ano ang ibig sabihin ng shall? That is mandatory. But ano ang sinasabi ni section 29 of your rule 23? Even if the word used in your section 17 is shall, meaning to say it is mandatory, but if there are errors and irregularities in the manner in which the testimony is transcribed or in any other manner under section 17, then what will happen? That is waived. Kaya kahit shall yan ang nakasulat sa section 17, relate that to your section 29 because errors and irregularities under section 17 are waived. But what is now your remedy? If there are errors and irregularities, then your remedy is to file a motion to suppress the deposition or a motion to suppress some part of that deposition. Within what time frame? within reasonable promptness after such defect is ascertained. So, take note ha. So, again ha, if hindi nasunod si section 17, even though the word used there is shall, then that errors and irregularities are still waivable. But what is your remedy para hindi yan waivable? You can file a motion to suppress the deposition or a motion to suppress some part of the deposition. And if you are going to relate this to your criminal cases, sa criminal cases, especially during sa by bust operations or mga raid, meron mga ebidensya na nakuha na hindi naman dapat kunin, then what can you file is a motion to suppress evidence and lawfully seize. This is just the same with your motion to suppress the deposition. 
So aside from the ones mentioned in Section 17, meron pa bang other duties? Si deposition officer, answer is yes. It is very clear under Section 20 that the deposition officer shall also certify on the deposition that the witness was duly sworn to by him and that the deposition is a true record of the testimony given by the witness. What else? The deposition officer shall also securely seal the deposition in an envelope and endorse it with the title of the action and mark deposition of whatever is the name of the witness and he shall promptly file it with the court. Again ha, the word used here under section 20 is shall. So meaning to say it is mandatory. So the word used in your section 17 and section 20 is shall. Shall meaning to say that it is mandatory. But again, ano ang sinasabi ni section 29? Even though it is a mandatory requirement, but if there are errors and irregularities under Section 17 and under Section 20, that is waivable. And what is your remedy? Your remedy is to file a motion to suppress the deposition or some part thereof. So just to emphasize, you need to file a motion to suppress the deposition or some part thereof if there are errors and irregularities when it comes to Section 17 and Section 20. So what else are his duties? Number seven, give prompt notice to all the parties that the deposition is already filed in the court basis. Section 21 is very clear. The officer taking the deposition shall give prompt notice of its filing to all the parties. Another duty is to furnish a copy of the deposition to any party or to the deponent as long as there is a payment of reasonable charges. Basis that is very clear according to Section 22 of Rule 23. So these are the duties of your deposition officer. We will encounter again this one when we go to the deposition taking proper. So mas madali nyo nang maintindihan kasi meron na kayong idea.